Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Halterman. I'm the West Coast editor of TVFanatic.com, and I write for Xfinity and NewNowNext.com and a bunch of other sites. Um, does anybody have Kleenex? Because did anybody else kind of get all chunky? Yeah, see? Oh, everybody's, I see Kleenex out there. Um, well, thank you all for coming. It's, it's a special movie, um, and we're going to talk about it tonight. Let's bring out some of the actors, and of course, let's bring out Ali Walker, who wrote it, directed it. Uh, And then the kid that just just blew me away when I watched this, Joshua Rush. Yeah. And we got him off the deathbed, Bailey Chase. Also the most beautiful man I know. <laughs> Um, well, obvious first question, Ali. Tell me about the genesis of this. You wrote it. You directed it. Was tell me how you just started with this idea and kind of ran with it. Um, okay. Uh, so I wrote this about four years ago, I guess. Um, I had uh, I had uh, what well, was it? It was a, a, sort of an unfortunate series of events in my life. I had lost a lot of people in my family um, to cancer, and my best friend uh, had got cancer and died very quickly. And so I was sort of surrounded by. Um, I think four people all within a year just passing away. Um, and I was with a few of them and, and, and it became this sort of surreal experience to be sitting at you know another deathbed and, and dealing with it. And, uh, and I just, my kids were, my boys, I have three boys and they were young and they would start asking me, well, where's grandpa gonna go? You know, wh where do you think he is? And I just started kind of running with that question. You know, I just like, well, and I began going through various philosophies and talking to them about various things. And I just began, you know, when people die, you sort of get, um, you sort of understand, or you at least try to understand what's really important in life. And, or you start, you don't take things for granted like you used to, like time. And, uh, and, and so I just, I was uh, raising my kids and I wasn't acting as much because I was with my kids more. And I started writing, I used to say, I, I wrote this in the pickup line at school. Because I would just take my laptop at places and wait for my kids at soccer or whatever, and I just kept writing and writing, and um, and so that's sort of the genesis of it. Yeah. Okay. And, and were you in your head? Were you always thinking, I, w I want to direct this too? Did you see that early on, or did that come in later? You know, I sort of fumble through life. <laughs> I mean, I've sort of been like, well, you know, I gave this script. I went to New York. I was doing a play for Nora Ephron, um, Love Lost, and what I wore the last run of the show, and you know being around Nora Ephron, I'd always wanted to be a writer. I've always written, and I've always, I was just such a, an amazing experience. And you know, she's an amazing director as well, and so I was, you know, sort of blown away by her. And I met a casting director when I was there named Sigda Miguel, who's sort of the indie kind of great casting director out of New York. And we got to talking, and I, I said, well, I do a little bit, I dabble in a little bit of writing. And uh, he, he read the script, and he started going, well, we're going to make it. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, okay. You know, and he said, no, no, I'm gonna get a cast, we're gonna make it. And he started to assemble this amazing cast and um, I got money and then it happened very, very quickly. I had not really planned on directing and I thought, well, we should get somebody better than me to do this. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, but then everybody was like, well, I can do it, but I can do it in like two weeks. And I was like, well, I, I can't find anybody in two weeks. So I just was like, okay, I'll do it. And I stepped up and just kind of threw myself into it, so. Okay. We, we talked a little bit um, before we came out. How did bowling get into this? Because I'm, fr I'm from Indiana, so I bowl. I have my own ball and shoes. It's just it was a way of life. So I love that about the movie. But how did that become a part of this? Do so you have a history in bowling? You know, it's the weirdest thing. My father was, uh, I was at my, my, my parents' house. My father was dying. And uh, my father had always had this really weird little bowling trophy. And we would always be like, do you bowl? And he's like, no. And it was, you know, I just, that really stuck out. And I found that stupid bowling trophy at the house when my father was passing away. And I remember this is just the craziest thing. Now, I bowled. I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, as did Adrian Grenier, who is a genius bowler. As a matter of fact, every strike you see in the movie is Adrian Grenier's. <laughs> He's amazing. But we were both so bored. You know, it's snowy. There's not a lot going on. You go to the bowling alley with your friends back in the day. So it was like the fun, you know, just hanging out. Um, so, but, but that trophy was kind of like, I saw that trophy again after, and I remember my childhood looking at that trophy and thinking, who bowls, you know? But, uh, so that's how bowling got in there. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Now, I, I'm always curious when actors write or direct or do other things, because in some ways they are all kind of connected, and you've had experience yeah. obviously being directed and mm -hmm. working from scripts. How do you think being an actor helped you in your writing and in your directing? Um, you know, I think I've been around for a really long time, almost 30 years, and I think I've worked with a lot of people, and I've read a lot of material, and I think a, a good story is a good story is a good story. And I think if you're if you're lucky, I've always thought it was the writing, you know, whether I'm acting or being direct, I've always liked it's the writing, you know, if the writing's there, I can really do it. If it's not, you know, your, your job as an actor or a director is much, much harder, I think. Um, so I just tried to, to do something that I would like to do and to arc people's, you know, storylines the way I would like to flesh them all out, to have it be a circle, to have it, you know, really be a good story. So that's, that's just sort of how I approached it. And I, I, I hope that I, you know, did that in the end. I was like, you know, I think I enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> and how did, how did these two gentlemen come to the project? Um, well, let's see, I was uh, meeting with a bunch, a lot of people, and uh, I'll start with Josh here, because it's sort of a, it's a <laughs> terrible tale in some parts, but Josh, Josh was 11 at the time and came in, and uh, it, it just blew us away. We were like, oh my God, <laughs> that's Eli. Um, but being a first time director and being terrified, I, I had a 14-year-old who had done a lot of movies and done a lot of work, and I was like, you know, one of us can be first time, you know, at this, he's got a lot, I mean, it's a heavy, Josh is the center of the piece, you know, and he kind of carries the emotional through line of the piece, and I was like, he's only 11, I, you know, I don't think I'm good enough, what if he's not good enough, so I, I, I went with this 14-year-old boy, and, and, and after one day of shooting, I looked at Sig and I went, hey, can we call that other kid? <laughs> And um, we did, we did. We felt the other boy just, it wasn't working and uh, it was a tough, tough situation and then we called Josh and he, he came right. But it, Josh nailed everything he did. I mean, it was just astonishing, you know. Some people just, you know, can do that and he really just nails everything and it's, it's fun to watch. And Bailey I had met during casting and there was just, uh, you know, it's like a quality, you know. It's sort of like I feel the characters because they came from my imagination and from my life. These are people that I grew up with, you know. They're all someone I know. And uh, like Rick was my best friend, you know. He was my best friend who died. And, and when I met Bailey, he had that quality of like, I was, you know, my best friend Rick was like a Gary Cooper. And when I met Bailey, it was sort of like that, like this dazzlingly handsome guy who's stoic and solid and loving. And it's very hard to find someone who's very masculine, who can be very vulnerable and, and Bailey, I just was like, oh, well, you know, I kind of think I said it over the phone. I was like, well, yeah, it's you. So, if, you know, if you're not doing anything, and, you know, <laughs> I had this very strange sort of casting. I'd just be with people and I'd be like, well, if you would like to do it, I'd really, you know, I'm, I'm open if you want to, you know. <laughs> well, Bailey, let me ask you first, you know, you're, you're laying down a lot of the movie, um, but what... Yes, that's what you notice. <laughs> Which you could say, oh, you could... You could say, oh, easy days work, but I'm guessing there were some challenges in that because you do emote a really great performance laying in bed. Talk about that a little Thank bit. Thank you. Uh, for, for, for me, um, you know, it's all about telling good stories. And then, you know, when Allie asked me, it was obviously uh, a no-brainer. It's, it's a beautiful story. And, and then, you know, actors have a certain language. And so there's a connection. And we had that. And so I was very excited coming in. And then... I start to do my homework, and it's like, cover your ears, oh shit, like, I, just, I don't move, I can't do anything, and on the first day, Allie's like, mm, no, no, you don't, you have less energy, you have less energy, I'm like, uh, okay, and we're on like page 10, and, uh, and you know, so, um, it, it was a big challenge for me um, to just sit there and do nothing and have it all be internal. And then I was really relieved when I when I saw the finished piece. Uh, it's beautiful. I've never done anything like this. Um, so yeah, you just you just got to do the work and, and trust it, and then let it go, and hopefully have a, a talented director. Um, Joshua, you, some of your dialogue right from the start, it's like, wow, this is, this is some heavy stuff coming out of your mouth. I was just curious how much did you understand about death and thermodynamics and other words that were coming out of your mouth in those, those first scenes? I, I like to think that I know a lot about thermodynamics. I, uh, I, I, I didn't really remember the first law of thermodynamics. I knew that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. I know that is a law, you know. But... Uh, 
in reality, I had to find that out at a really young age. And uh, my grandfather died at age, uh, while well, I was age six, uh, of leukemia, actually. And uh, I learned a lot about death. And I'm just kind of a naturally curious person, even in the worst of situations uh, like that. And I kind of learned a lot through that situation. What, what were some of the conversations you had with Allie just about the character and the script and the journey you were going on? Uh, hmm. I, I don't know if we... Uh, we didn't really have, like, hmm. deep conversations about it, you know? I mean, I think we had the... the we did rehearsing with Adrian and with Bailey. You came, didn't you, to... Uh, uh, yeah, we and did. We, yeah. we kind of just talked through scenes and, you know, kind of how it felt and what the writing was meaning. And you asked questions, but yeah. we just did the work. I... Uh, I, I remember the first time that I read the script, and I, I, I really connected to the writing. I really, really felt it. And I was like, I want to be this character. I want to do this. <laughs> because I really felt like I could be this character, that I could really embody the character. And so I think that's where I really got my connection. Ba Bailey, tell me, what did you connect with, with the film, as, whether it's the theme of death or life, or what did you connect with? You know, again, it's it's just about coming back to to good stories, and I think that it, it's a human connection. And I could connect with this guy who went off to fight for his country, and he comes home, and he has a young son, and I'm I'm a new parent, and it's like, oh man, you know, to to have to leave now would uh, really tragic, and it it does not take a lot of imagination to, to get all those emotions going. And then even, you know, obviously outside of my character, but between Adrian and my dad and the whole messed up family dynamic that we all have, um, it, it's just relatable. And I think that's why it's going to resonate with, with audiences. And I think the film will do well. Because there, there is a lot of heavy stuff in this film, but it's also a light film in a lot of ways. There's a lot of lightness there. How challenging was that to balance that out, whether it was in the writing or the directing, to make sure it wasn't weighed down too much? Well, that was, that was, the, that was the hardest thing to do, because, I mean, that's what also took so long in post. And, you know, post was the most... Because I could write it, and I turned out to, to do... Directing, I think, and it, Jim Brooks said this, or, or, or so, I think someone said this to me, that 95% that of it is casting. If you cast the right people, you just step back and you shoot them. And I really did. I cast really, really well. I'm very proud of myself as a director in that I cast it really well. But um, post is, is really like a rewrite, and I'd never had experience with that. It was unbelievably difficult. So when we started going in, because I was like, I don't want it to be really melodramatic and heavy. It's heavy enough just because of what it is. And I miss those light moments. Because, you know, my dad was dying and he was, we were laughing, you know, two days before he passed away. It was like you found those funny things like, well, are you going to mash the bananas or didn't you mash the bananas? You know, you're like doing these weird things that you'd never laugh at and then you're laughing. Um, but that was really difficult and that took a lot in post. And I had, I had a, at my la I had three very good editors who would come and go off the film, but Richard Halsey, who, uh, who cut Rocky, um, was genius at it and just was like, nope, let's just leave it there, you know, and it was, uh, he really helped me a lot. Okay. How was it for each of you since you've all, you've all worked quite a bit, but when you're an actor getting directed by an actor, how was that, whether it's, you've, I'm sure you've experienced it on other projects, but how was that for each of you? Is it, is it different? You want me to go? You can go on. I, uh, <laughs> I, I personally, Love it. I, I've worked with some some great actors who have become directors, and and it goes back to speaking that same language. Even though they're you know directors first, or whatever they are now, that they were actors first, and so that's their first take on it. And they know what what you're going through. So they're not they're not going to give you a bad note. They're not going to give you, hey, you know, go do you know more more like you know just just some some kind of like reaction kind of thing. It it's just going to be a pointed note that should trigger something in you emotionally. And Allie would maybe whisper something in my ear, and I'd look at Selma, and she'd be wide open, and, and then it would just play beautifully. Okay. Joshua, how about you? Yeah, I, I, I really agree with you about we're, we're actors, and we speak the same kind of language. Wow, that's louder. Um, 
we, we speak the same kind of language and it, it allowed us to connect a lot better, I think, and it allowed the film to become a lot better. I've gotten direction from anywhere that's really, really nails what it is, what she wants me to do. Um, using Ali as an example, I've gotten really, really great direction from her on this film that really hits exactly what she wants us to do. Get, gets everything done in the least amount of takes, and it was great. And in the past, I've gotten direction that's like, feel more on this. <laughs> like, what does that mean? I don't understand this. And uh, with Ali, it was really special because I wasn't, th there was nothing like that. So uh, it, it really comes down to speaking the same language. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. You know, it's, it's really important, I think, for all of us. You know, there's a sense of, you know, when actors are very vulnerable, and, you know, if you've been very vulnerable and you've ever been sort of mistreated by someone or you've had to flail, and it's very hard because I know that feeling because I've been treated that way or I've been flailing, you know, and I never wanted to do that because I have enormous respect for acting because it's really hard. It's really hard to be good at this, you know? And so I just wanted to really connect with these people. And, um, and I think being an actress for so long allowed me to be very, I, I hope, you know, be very respectful. And even if it wasn't done the way that I saw when I wrote it, that it was like, oh, I see the value. I'm going to do that, OK? And you allow it, and you go with it, and you support it. You know, because the best work comes when people give, when you, they feel safe enough to give and safe enough to listen, when they're not pushed into, hey, there's a box right here, get in it. You know, at least that's how I work. I always hated that, you know? And people would be snapping, like, let's go, let's go, do it, you know? And I want you to cry here, and I want you to jump over that wire, and I want you to, you know, and you're like, uh, okay. And you execute, but it, it's a lot better if somebody's like, you know, I'm right here, just do it, and we'll just talk about it. You know, if there's any problems, we'll just do it. So I loved working. I love, I have an enormous respect for actors. Well, I and, <laughs> and guessing this didn't have a huge budget, you didn't have a ton of time to shoot. How do you kind of get everybody to come together as a unit as quickly as possible, whether it's the cast, the crew, everybody, to kind of just be on the same page, or do you just trust that it'll all fall into place? You know, you just have to sort of give up at a certain point and trust that it'll all fall into place. And I'm telling you, 95% of what I did as a director was cast the right people, because they carried it. And because this was around, you know, hey, because this was, is that Wajid? Is that you? Oh my God, Guru size here. That's great. Washington, come here. You want to come? Hi. Um, hi, yay. Um, you know, I just, uh, what was the question? Um, no, I just think it's casting. I mean, honestly, I, it, my job is to get the, the right quality, and I really just felt it. It was a gut thing. You know, I've never really understood a lot of what I do. I just know it, and I know it when I know it, and so I just try to get out of its way. You know, because I, I can feel when, when it's right, and I just thought, and at least that's how I feel about, you know, art in general, or experiencing, you know, like I feel like we're, our, we're the instruments. So if it's playing right, let it, leave it alone, you know, and that's kind of what I did, or I, I think I did. Yeah, well, going off on that a little bit, for some of the actors that aren't here tonight, I, I was really blown away by just, we talked a little bit about this backstage, just, you know, the, a lot of actors in the film, we were doing things we hadn't seen them do before. I hadn't seen Selma Blair do anything that dramatic. Drea, Adrian, talk about those. Were those conscious choices, or were they just the right people for the part? Well, I think they were sort of uncommon choices. You know, I think it was interesting because before I uh, say, for example, Adrian, you know, uh, his character is loosely based on Tom Ford, who I grew up with in Santa Fe, and Tom was very sweet and shy and wicked smart, and you know, I knew he, he was gay. And, you know, but I don't think a lot of people did. And, and at the time that all this was happening with my family, flash forward to 2000, you know, eight, nine, 10, I ran into Tom again after, you know, 25 years. And I put him in the film, you know? Um, and Tom had this quality as a kid. And you couldn't really know him. You, obviously, he was very careful because he was gay. And it was at a time where you didn't really run around. You know, it's not like today. You didn't do that. And he was 14, you know? And there was this, uh, this sort of enigmatic kind of detachment. You know, you didn't really, he was aloof. And I met Adrian, and I never thought of, I liked Adrian's work fine, but I didn't really think he was right for the part. But when I sat down with him, I was like, oh good, you're aloof. It wasn't because he was gorgeous, it was because he was so aloof. And I was like, that's Sean, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's, you know, they had a quality. And I, 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 I don't know, I just kind of instinctually, I think it's because I wrote the piece. And that's why I think it's, it's easier when you write it, because if you, if you, if you don't write it, you, I mean, I knew these people. And Selma came in, and Selma's, you know, pretty and has done really, really well off of what she can do. But Selma, to me, she, and at the time, she was going through a pretty rough time in her life, and she was just kind of this sort of controlled chaos. I was like, isn't that funny? That's exactly what Glenn is. And so I was like, okay, you know? And it was just like these little things, I would just watch them and think about that, that essence. And it was surprising, the choices. And even Bailey was, you know, and you know, you were the number one choice of, for all of us from the get-go, but I was just too terrified as a director. I was like, he's little. You know, I'm gonna feel bad if something happens, he's little. Um, but even Bailey, you would never, you would never, you meet this guy who's gorgeous and looks like a ball player and is like, and you just go, but there's this softness. And it was like, oh, he's so sweet, you know? And I thought that'd be great to catch that, you know? So it was really fun, actually. Like a detective or something, it's really fun. <laughs> now I have to ask because you know, I've been a fan of your work for a long time, was there ever a thought of you putting yourself in your own movie? Um, no, I don't think I'm quite good. <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't think I could do that, you know, I, at this point. I, I really just wanted to focus on, on telling the best story that I could. And I knew once I decided to direct it and once we had everything going, which was very quickly, once the, the actors started coming on, it was like the money was in place. And there, it, it wasn't much money. We made it for very little money. But I was like, you know, okay, I'm just going to focus really hard on this and, and do it and do it well, you know. But, uh, there, you know, there's a bit of me and Glenn, there's a bit of, you know, my, you know, my mother and Glenn, there's bits and pieces of everybody, so. Okay. Tell me about just shooting the bowling scenes. I'm just fascinated with the bowling part of it. <laughs> He's um, a bowler. <laughs> but but was, it, was it something you guys just all shot, like, in the, the, a day or two, or was it spread yeah, out? Yeah, it was How like two, day, two days, right? Three days? Was it three? It was three days, and we had, um, we had a lot of bowling to do. And we just like we'd be like, okay, we're over here now because you know it's a really fast and furious pace on independent filmmaking. If you, any of you have done it, you just you're cranking and you have to know exactly what you want and you have to get it. And so it was like, okay, now we're doing the yellow shirts. The yellow shirts should be by the green shirts. Shouldn't the yellow shirts be by the green shirts in this round? And you know it was it was it was crazy. Um, and then you know we had these experts who could bowl and none of them could hit a strike. And Adrian, I'd be like, Adrian, can you hit a strike? You know, and you're terrified because you have to get a strike. And so Adrian would like, yeah, I can get a strike. I mean, I had visual effects removed. Move Adrian from shooting a strike. I was like, I'll do it in post. Just shoot the strike. <laughs> so you know, it was like it was very stressful the bowling, and then you're like, you know, you start to lose your mind. It was towards the end of the shoot and all the fluorescence, and you're like, do do we have the one where the red shirts beat the blue shirts? You know. So it was it was a lot of bowling, a lot a lot of bowling, and we were all really punchy and tired, and it was like, did he bowl his second strike yet? And you just it was really funny. It was really hard, but it was really fun. And everybody had fun in the bowling alley. We were all, you know, I must say I was fairly decent at bowling myself. <laughs> you know, it was very fun. You were good too, actually, right? I learned how to bowl on that set. Yeah. Oh, man. And how, and how are you bowling-wise? He was horrific. Wait, who are you asking? I was asking you, Josh. Horrific. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think I bowled maybe two strikes over the course of those three days, and those were pure luck. Pure luck. Well, they all are, aren't they? <laughs> um, I want to ask Bailey and Joshua, what, what was the most challenging scene for you in the whole film? Because there's a lot of different s things going on in different scenes. Was there one scene that was a little more challenging than other others? The scene under the tree. I was... It was really late for starters. It was like wow. 10 o'clock and I go to bed at like eight o'clock. Um, I, I love going to bed early. This is already like an hour and a half past my bedtime. Um, yeah, I'm a teenager who doesn't like to party because um, I don't get invited to them. But anyway, um, that's beside the point. Um, no, they, that scene um, on the oak tree, I was really tired and it was cold and it was, it was just, it was a tough scene and it ended up coming out really well and that scene is beautiful. That's a beautiful scene. Um, I don't know how you found that tree. I don't know what happened. Um, but I, it was, it was a hard scene, but it was, it came out really well. You did a great job. You did such a good job. Love you. Oh. I guess for me, I mean, obviously, all of mine were, were in the bedroom. Uh, Come on. 
They all kind of ran together. No, they didn't. <laughs> the um, but the one the one that was different was when you know all my high school buddies come back and and there's a lot of people and a lot of energy in a small room, and the vibe is down. But then then you know people start telling stories and getting carried away, and there was some improv going on in that scene. And uh, yeah, as a human being, you you want to react to that, and and you feed off it, and you you want and 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 it it was a you know it was just more of a struggle to not not just not move, but to to want to move and and not. And I think you know that all comes through somehow. Like a guy is just yeah. is uncomfortable. Um, so maybe that one. What what were the rules about improv? Was it something you you allowed, or was there not times you had to have everybody kind of stick to the script? You know, most people, it, everybody came really prepared. Everybody had, but if they if they you know if they switched it up, I'm not like you know I've worked with people who were like I'm I'm sorry that's of you know not at that's of and you're like are you kidding me? <laughs> I just bawled my eyes out for four hours. Um, and, and, and no, if these guys wanted to do it, and that was a great scene because I was like, you guys just, you know, you all played ball together, just do it. And we were doing handheld that day. So it was a million like takes and sweeping. Cause I, I love to shoot. I don't know why, I just love to shoot. So I was like covering myself and I was like, yeah, just, you know, do the ball. I don't know, I never played football. And I was like, say something like you caught the football or something, you know, and, 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 and they started doing it, it was so great. And it was just really sweet, you know, and they were laughing and, you know, you see Selma happy for the first time and you see him looking at her and it was just like, oh my God, go, just keep improv, you know. So uh, I, I'm, I'm open. If it makes the scene better, you know, okay. go for it. Okay. Joshua and Bailey, do you, do you generally like to improv, whether it's in this project or anything else? You, you can you go. I, I answered the last one first. Okay, I'll go first. You insist. Uh, mo most of the TV stuff, um, you know, they, they tend to be a bit more diligent about staying to the script, and that's fine. I'm happy to do that if, if the writing's good. It's it's easy to do. Uh, and that kind of sets everything up and, you know, keeps the cues and the blocking and everything on schedule. Uh, but I did do uh, another independent film where um, the director didn't love the script, so he encouraged, a, you know, a lot of improving, and uh, it was interesting because the the better actors were great at it, and you connected, or I, you know, we would connect, and those um, maybe you know who were struggling struggling for whatever reason um, would get lost and couldn't couldn't do it, and would always go back to the script, um, so. You know, I like it in, in the right circumstances, for sure. I, I always like to ask on these panels, since we're all actors, or you guys are all actors, I'm not an actor. But um, what, what was that first job that got you your SAG card? What was it for you guys? Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Um, I know you want an answer. Yeah, well, I love improv. I love improv. I, improv is so much fun to do. I've, I've studied, I've done Second, Cities, Second City Hollywood. Let me let me not jump the gun a little bit here. Second City Hollywood, yeah, which is great, love them there, um, and I, I've done their improv camps all the time, and I did their Saturday classes. I love doing improv; it's so much fun because you start off and it's a little bit awkward at the start. You're like trying to get into a conversation, and by the end of it, you're just kind of you forget you're improving. You're just sitting there and you're having a conversation. It's really awesome. All right, well, why don't you continue and tell us what, what was the job that got you your SAG card? Uh, I was on private practice. I got my card in 2008. I was on private practice. It was the first job I got after moving out to LA. I was in like two or three jobs right in a row. I don't know how that happened. Um, that's never happened again in the history of my career. I've never gotten like three jobs in a row. I got. CSI New York Heroes and Private Practice, I think, were the three shows. It was it was a blast. Um, it was amazing, and I I became saggy shortly after. Okay. Right. Allie, how about you? I was looking at your credits earlier. Long time ago. We're reaching way back now. Um, I was uh, actually asked to be in a little film in God a million years ago, uh, called Aloha Summer with Chris Makepeace. 
And I think you see me streaking down a hall. Well, not streaking, streaking, but, you know, like running down a hall. And that's my, uh, I got Taft Hartley, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bailey, do you remember? Uh, Married with Children was, was the first one. And then the second one where I had to join was, was Baywatch. Uh, well, if you, you get serious when it comes to We're all going to be on YouTube <laughs> later looking those up. <laughs> um, we have a couple audience questions for you all. Um, for Allie, Adriana Bella? Where's Adriana? There she is right there. Um, she wanted to know um, if, I don't know if you can answer this, do you enjoy writing, directing, or acting more? And which do you get the most out of? You know, I, I enjoy all of them, actually. I really, uh, I, I love acting, because that's, you know, what I've been doing for so long. Uh, but writing is really, I, I love to write, I have to say. Directing, too, though. I really enjoy directing, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel bad. Um, no, I love to write. I love to write. This one's also for Ali. They, they didn't leave me their name. Um, but any, any advice on actors that, that do want to kind of transition into writing or directing for that matter? I think you just do it. You know, it's like everything else in this business. I think you have to believe in yourself and you have to just do it. You just go do it. Nobody, you know, I gave it to a script to someone. They said I should make it and I, and I just did. You know, I went and asked people for money. I, I got people together. I, I, you know, I was very lucky because I knew a lot of people. But, I mean, I really did start from the ground up. I went and begged for money. And I, I did whatever I had to do. I drove those hard drives to the editing bay. I put, you know, I did everything. I did absolutely everything. I waited for editors. I asked favors. I begged people to help me, you know, because I had no money. And uh, you just do whatever, do it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Okay, Joshua or Bailey, do you guys have any ambition to write or direct? Uh, I and no, I, I, not not a massive amount. I've I've written. I, I think a lot of us like to write. Yeah. Is that is that common there? I I love to write. Actually, I love and writing. I yeah, I mean, I think there's we all read a lot of scripts, and uh, I think it's a really cool way to get out that creativity. I love to write. I don't know about directing. I'm not a big fan. There's too much logistics and managing involved, and. I'm not big on that. I like to be told, well, not by my parents, but I like to be told what to do. Do you like to write Bailey? I do, I, I love it, I, I, I think it's great. I, I didn't do it the you know first, I don't know, half of my career and, and now I'm um, actively pursuing and just, you know, I was telling her I changed agents and, and got a lit agent. To, to flesh out some of these ideas where maybe I don't have the confidence that I would, you know, as, as an actor, because uh, I haven't been doing it for 20 years, but to I have some really good ideas. And then, you know, you just pair up with a, with a, with a good writer, and then, you know, you, you bang out a script. And, and it keeps you active and productive in, uh, in those downtimes, because we have, you know, well, I have downtimes. I, don't, I shouldn't speak for you, but we all do. And it, and it keeps you up. Ali, what's the plan with the film? Uh, it's going to start showing up in theaters? Tell, tell yeah, everybody. Yeah, it uh, starts at uh, Lemley Aria Fine Arts in Beverly Hills Friday. So if you'd like to see it again, um, it starts at 7.15. It's in uh, North Carolina at an indie theater. It's in New Mexico. It's in Oregon. It's in Florida. San Diego just picked it up. We're, we're just doing, you know, it's, 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 an, it's a truly independent film. We're getting picked up at... at uh, at theater houses in, in various places. Um, it's going on to a iTunes uh, December 15th. I just found out Netflix just bought it. They want to stream it in, yeah, in the spring. Thank you. Yeah, Sundance Channel of Europe. I'm getting all the European territories now. So it's been really lovely. The last month, you know, has made all of the, you know, driving around with those hard drives <laughs> worth it. It's been really great. So it's, it's uh, residuals. It's, yeah. It, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have to pay now. That's really hard. I'm like, what? Um, producing is really hard. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's 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 really kind of flowing now. So if it does well at the Lemley, they're gonna they're gonna open wider, and then they'll you know try to get it in Northern California. It, it'll you know if it does well, it opens bigger. So we'll we'll see what happens. Okay. For for people that are watching on the SAG Foundation YouTube page, is there a website they can go to to just kind of see if it's coming to their area? Um, there is Monterey Media. Uh, just go to Monterey Media. Uh, I guess it's dot com. I'll give it to you afterwards. I have to look it up because I, I I forgot the exact one. But they they have a list. And if you go to Sex, Death, and Bowling on Facebook. It'll always have the, the, the site where you can find out where it's playing. 
And uh, yeah, so tell your relatives, tell your friends. <laughs> Great. Well, th thanks to everybody here, and thanks Thank so you. much.